Hey y'all, welcome to my shop. Easter's coming, so I thought we'd turn a few cute uh, Easter bunnies. These would make great little gifts in, along with chocolate uh, eggs in an Easter basket. Alright, we're going to start uh, turning the body with a block of oh, about 2 and an eighth by 3 inches long. Uh, we can either turn it between centers or we can put it in, in, a, in a chuck square. And I'm just basically turning the end round and making a uh, making a tenon on the end. And we'll turn the speed up to whatever you feel comfortable. Maybe 1300, 1800. We're going to anchor the tool right about the lift of the cut. got it round enough to put a tenon on it for these normal jaws, so I'm going to use my beating and parting tool. Alright, I'm going to adjust this, get it a little bit closer. Spin that around. The tool rests, so we're going to be turning close to center. Make sure you spin this, so it makes sure everything clears. Now let's finish turning it round. Okay, I want this to be about two and three quarters inches long, so we're gonna we've got the caliper set for that, and I'm just gonna mark that. And I generally like, like to mark things like this with a parting cut, so I know exactly where we're going if I accidentally touch the. The line, my mark won't go away. You know, got a little now to get that egg shape, this is going to be the blunt end, and, and this is going to be the thickest part. So I'm just going to kind of guesstimate exactly where that is, and I'm going to use a uh, spindle gouge to shape the end of this. I'm going to get this at about 45 degree angle to this cut. Anchor the tool, ride the bevel, get to the cut, turn it around, turn it around, turn it around. I've got just a little bit of tailstock damage here that I've got to get rid of. I've got a live center damage. And now I've got to make this. it up parallel, start bringing this down, so I'm going to go ahead and make this part a little bit smaller, or rather deeper, and I'm going to part just to the left of that other part, maybe a little bit more. I'm parting it down where I've got oh, maybe an inch or so there, still give it some stability so it won't chatter on me while I'm taking this down, so I'm going to come back to this this pencil line and just the left of it. Right, taking down the wood. By having this part here, it also creates what you might call a stop gap. If I come off the end by pressing too hard or got a dull tool, it's not going to run into the chuck. It's going to hit, come off and hit that wood. Where it gets too thin here, I want to get rid of a couple of tool marks here and then do some little sanding. Turn speed down to maybe a third of what your turning speed was. And now we get a little sanding. We're going to go through all the grips. You get two shorts there. You can, you can round this off and cut it off and sand the end of it. or. You can do what I'm going to do. You can make a jam chuck. And if you're not comfortable making jam chucks, this is a great opportunity because this, this is a great, great thing. I've already turned one of these, made a jam chuck to fit it. So we're going to we're going to take this down a little bit more, and then we're going to put it in the jam chuck. So I'm just going to use a parting tool to take it down just a bit further. this. In comes the jam chuck. Jam chuck is 
basically like a large more, think of it as a large Morse taper, still got about a three degree slope. And we're just going to bring up the tailstock uh, and the live center to center this. Before I put it in there too tightly, I'm going to bring up that tailstock to get it centered so it'll run true. So again, back to that 3 8 inch spindle gouge. I always turn to make sure it clears the tailstock, or the uh, tool rest rather. Let's speed up a little bit more. Turning about 1800. Getting rid of this excess. sand in the end of this. You see this jam chuck really is a great chucking technique. It just takes a little practice, get a little confidence, but it works super, super good. It goes with all your grits. And I use my homemade abrasive paste. Uh, I liberally rub it on there while the lathe is not running. Get a nice coat and then turn it on. A somewhat slow speed to start. This gets rid of all the micro scratches. Sometimes jam chucks hold too good and they're a bit of an effort to take it out, but usually you can wedge your fingers and pop it out. And for some things, uh, if the wall is thin enough, you can just pop it like that and that'll vibrate it loose. Now I'm switching to 35 millimeter jaws, but you know, if you don't have 35 millimeter jaws, your other option is to just turn, turn this smaller egg head out of the uh, larger, larger piece and turn it down, but you know, keep it two and an eighth or so, so you can put it in your normal jaws. This is probably a little bit longer than it needs to be. I'm going to go ahead and round off the end first again, using my spindle, spindle gouge. Might get a little chatter if I'm not careful. It's sticking out of way. Slow the feed rate, anchor the tool, ride the bevel. You got to keep bringing that curve around. Keep riding that bevel all the way around. I find uh, novice turners really ch a challenge sometimes with beans for the same reason. They they, they don't they it, it's tricky swinging this handle out. Takes a little practice. Okay. Parting it down maybe oh three eighths plus inches. Now I'm gonna come back here and start to shape. some of this waste wood. I'm going to come back a little bit. It's a bigger blank than normal, so I need to get in there when I put this thing with jam chuck. And then let's take a little bit more of this down with a spindle gouge. Turning a jam chuck is beyond the scope of this particular video, but I've got another video I'll have a link above here if you're interested in learning more about how to make jam chucks because they can get you out of jam. Alright. I don't want to make this too pointed or it'll look like a mouse. want to slice those fibers off clean or they could tear out so you just want to make sure you're slicing away and then sand off any little difference. There we go. And now I'm just going to slice and cross. Alright, let me sand that. Alright, let's see if I can pop this one out as easy as I did the last one. Oh yeah, no problem. And the beautiful thing is the the wood neat leaves no marring on it. It's just a, a it's just a great great technique. Okay, I've checked up a small piece of wood. This might be three quarters of an inch. I'm not sure. Doesn't matter. The tail's going to be a lot smaller. Just turn it appropriate size, you bunny. Uh, maybe, maybe three eighths of an inch. So we're just going to turn this round. 
for something this small. I'm not going to bother the spindle roughing gouge. I'll just go ahead and use my spindle gouge. Turn speed up a little bit. Just use it almost like a skew. Take a slice and cut on the side. I like a white white piece of wood because you know it's like here comes Peter Cottontail up and down the bunny trail. More cottontail. Alright. And I think I'll take a skew to part this off with. This tapered. Going that hole there we go. Okay, we're going to turn the ears. You got an option with the ears. You could make them out of leather. I'll show you one of those in a, in a moment. But uh, we're going to turn these. Let me show you how that works. And use my spindle gouge. sandpaper and then we're going to go with the bandsaw. You could probably cut this in half with the, on your bandsaw if you had a really fine tooth blade, but I cut almost everything. Let's turn it over because I got it flat on this side. Uh, almost everything with a, a 3 8 inch, 3 tooth. It's very coarse and it's not worth trying to change, the, uh, change it out. So we'll just cut it on the scroll saw. Probably right about there. Hold on to it so they don't go flying. Okay, and that's almost smooth enough. I can rub that against some flat sandpaper uh, and I'll show you the tricky part. Okay, a couple of quick sanding tips. Put you a piece of 120 on a piece of uh, maybe 3x11 MD, uh, MDF, and that may be all you need. That's all, that's all I'm going to do. You're going to glue the, the ears here and you want to, you want it uh, slightly concave to match the convex profile of the ear. So you can uh, wrap sandpaper around a dowel or in this case I'm just going to use a, a Dremel style rotary tool and just try to hit it. That, that will work. Now I'm going to drill a tiny little hole here and a matching tiny little hole here for a toothpick to help support it during the glue up. some assembly here we're going to uh, drill a couple of holes uh, I want uh, I want to put a small bamboo skewer reinforcement to reinforce that head so to do that I'm just going to uh, perpendicular to this I'm going to mark a hole with my awl and perpendicular to this in the center I'm going to mark mark a hole with an awl and then I'm going to drill an appropriate size hole Again, perpendicular to the hole, or to the flat spot rather. And then same thing here. And let me get a pair of, to break it off, let me get a pair of cutters. Just cut it off here. And 
See if that'll work before I put a little glue on it. Make a mess. Oh yeah, that'll work just that'll work just great. Okay, so I'm gonna come back and put a little glue on that. So now we've got the issue of his ears. I'm going to mark where I think the ears ought to go. Right about here. And right about here. Now I could use a, I could use, you know, this electric drill, but for something like this, I think it's a little easier for me to use a small drill bit on my drill nut, so I'm going to use that. And now I'm going to get out a toothpick and stick in a toothpick and clip that. Well, there goes at an angle. And hold it. <laughs> I didn't drill holes in here, so let's drill holes in here. And I'm going to use this piece of sandpaper to help hold this. One more hole to drill. I decided this from instead of being a laying down bunny, it's going to be a stand up bunny, so I've got to re drill the tail hole. Hey, sometimes you just got to go with the flow here. All right, let's, let's put this thing together. We're going to start with putting in a bunny tail. I'm going to use a little medium CA. You could use a carpenter's glue if you, if you prefer which I usually do. I'm just going to pop that in there. I'm going to smack it down so it won't as it'll go. Alright. Next is going to be the head. We've already dry fit. It's always a good idea to dry fit glue. Put a little drop there. Put that here. Orient, orient the head. Maybe for a little bit of attitude. sure you got it nice. I got a little bit of glue spilling out, so let me see if I can't get rid of some of that. Okay, that's done. Now the ears, the ears are the trickiest part. You gotta kinda kinda fit those things until you got your toothpicks fit in the hole. That one works. Wiggle it sideways. Ta-da! All I gotta do is put eyes on it. When it comes to eyes, you can either draw the eye on with a felt tip pen, or you could do what I did. I, I picked up a few map pens. Uh, if you use map pens, you need to drill a hole to recess it a little bit so it doesn't look too googly-eyed. Another option besides turned ears, you can make them out of leather. And frankly, the leather ones are easier to, to do. You just drill a hole uh, with a little longer uh, piece in it, uh, put a little glue in there and squeeze it and push it in. If you want a couple of more uh, Easter projects, I've got links to two of them, one on turning a, a cross uh, and one on turning an Easter egg. Your feedback and comments are important to me, so leave them in the comments below. If you're a brand new viewer, I'd appreciate the one th uh, making a comment on the most important thing you got out of this video. Remember, y'all stay safe. Come on back here.